Well, welcome. Yeah, I'm ready. Welcome, everyone, to our Concentrated Liquidity Seminar. Uh, we are joined today by Float Locker, who is our resident expert in concentrated liquidity. Uh, so we're going to talk all things concentrated liquidity. As you guys might know, I am not an expert in concentrated liquidity. In fact, uh, I'm a bit of a novice in terms of concentrated liquidity because concentrated liquidity became, I would say, became most popular uh, sort of at the peak or or right on the other side of the bull market. Uh, and so as we were entering a bear market, I wanted to reduce and reduce and reduce my long exposure to the point where I became completely delta neutral almost, let's see, almost seven months ago at this point. Uh, and because I couldn't hedge concentrated liquidity pools perfectly, um, I sort of avoided them uh, because I was scared of any delta whatsoever. But now, now that I think we're probably closing in on something approximating a bottom, and now that I see some of the yields may outsize the potential IL, and now that I've sort of, I don't know, become pretty good at hedging, I think we've all become sort of hedging experts over the past uh, few months, I think it's time to finally learn about this concentrated liquidity stuff. And uh, I could not be happier with our with our resident tutor or teacher, Flow Locker. So Flow Locker, if you don't know, uh, writes about concentrated liquidity in in his, um, would you call it a blog or would you call it a website? How would you describe your publications? Uh, well, I, I run a I run a Discord uh, to give uh, like an individual uh, like mentorship in, in Uniswap pools. Uh, and then I show my performance. I, I post all my all my pools, my ideas behind them, market sentiment, what I'm thinking between behind those uh, behind those positions. And uh, I, I really don't. Uh, I, I have I have documentation on it to kind of go over my strategy and all that. But um, I I don't have like a official blog or anything that I post online. It, it's just it's just too much too much time to to be able to to manage that as well but um, certainly would you mind dropping the link to your discord in the uh, in the chat so people can access that if they would uh if they're interested oh yeah sure give me one second and while you're doing this the next question i'm going to ask is before we sort of dive into the the ins and outs of concentrated liquidity uh how did you get drawn towards concentrated liquidity and then what <laughs> How did you become so good at it? Or, or rather, why did you take this up to be sort of like your niche in, in the DeFi space? Uh, yeah, so um, uh, just a little background on me. I, I've, uh, I've been trading stocks and options since 2009. Uh, and then uh, I migrated to crypto in 2017, early 2017, uh, traded through... Uh, Traded through that market, uh, through the bear market, and then, um, and then throughout the current market. But um, the way I got into Uniswap V3 pools, uh, it was actually in September of 2021. Um, I owned some of the uh, some some Shiba, the Shiba Inu, and um, as I was holding uh, some of my position, I was like, you know what, I, I want to try out this Uniswap. Uh, pulls out right so i so i paired it with eth uh threw it in the one percent tier uh fee tier pool and um there was so much volume at the time that uh i literally roi'd on my whole pool within like a month and a half um oh, which was pretty phenomenal wow. yeah and so that really just boosted my interest into it right so um although uh just looking back it would have been better to to just have held the Shiba Inu all the way sure. uh, in 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 my wallet instead of pulling it because mm -hmm. I, I did lose out on 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 gains from just holding it. Right. But um, it did pique my interest, and um, you know, throughout this bear market, you know, I've been finding you know just finding that you can you know I just been farming in the in these pools, uh, and then when uh, Polygon launched on on Uniswap in late December, that made it even more accessible to a lot more people. And that's when I um, launched my Discord um, and my service for that. And then um, ever since I just been farming on there, initially I was just farming, uh, no hedging. Uh, so 
So it was, <laughs> it was more of a learning experience, uh, as far as, uh, um, you know, realizing that, okay, uh, this market is, uh, is brutal. Looks like we're entering into the bear phase. So, um, so in, in approximately, uh, May, June-ish, um, I started implementing, uh, hedging strategies, uh, using centralized exchanges. Um, I was particularly or primarily in, uh, Ethereum and you and Bitcoin pools. Um, either Bitcoin USDC, ETH, ETH USDC, or ETH and Bitcoin uh, pools, and um, and I would I would uh, kind of show how I would hedge within the Discord and and show um, you know just kind of how it's just kind of the idea is with 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 these Uniswap pools, um, it's not it's not um, particularly easy to hedge. And what you're trying to do is kind of trying to take out some of the delta risk, or at least most of it, uh, when you hedge, in in order to to generate the yields, right? That's right. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's been evolving ever since. It still evolves to this day. Um, you know, this space is moving fast. Um, I, you know, you you see a lot of people in the space that are that are coming up with new ways or new platforms. Um, ways to ways to make uh this strategy a little bit more viable for for more people because uh currently it is it is difficult and um you do you do take on you do take on risk as far as uh exposure right um especially if uh if price rallies or or you get large drawdowns in price to the point where where you even your hedge won't be as effective as it was when you implemented the pool. So um, there's a lot, a lot more innovations I feel that are coming to the space to help, to help with that. But until then, um, you know, I just, just go, I'll just go over my strategy. Um, basically, what I, what I before do is do that, I implement mind, the pool. Before you go, I'll start strategy. out, you know, uh, neutral, hedged, you know, yeah. with, with, uh, while borrowing through Ave, I'll borrow the ETH. I'll borrow Ethereum, say for an Ethereum USDC pool, I'll borrow, borrow Ethereum. I'll take that Ethereum, pair it with my own USDC, create the pool, and then, uh, as, and then I'll set my ranges based on what I've seen in recent volatility, recent price action. Uh, there is a little uh, technical analysis, not, not much that is needed, but you do have to kind of map out, okay, where has price been? Where is it more likely to go? Um, you could lean your pools more long or more short uh, to kind of to kind of capture some of that um, to capture some of that delta uh, in your favor uh, while while you collect yield. Um, and then in the in the case, you also have to think about uh, what if you get extended moves to say an extended rally or an extended drawdown, right? To where you get like 10, 20 percent uh moves to one to one side right um so you think about impermanent loss here and um you you start being forced to come to make the decision okay do i lock in this impermanent loss to mitigate any further losses right while this rally say this rally is getting extended or b uh maintain a reasonable amount of delta to the short side on this rally uh, to wait for some sort of mean reversion uh, in price to be able to capture back that uh, those losses, right? So it's, it's concentrated, providing liquidity and concentrated liquidity pools um, is, is amplified and it really brings out uh, the fact that you do kind of, you do, you do have to combine a little trading knowledge in, into into providing liquidity in these pools, um, there is there is some sort of that in 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 uh, standard traditional uh, pools, but uh, you know with with the way uh, depending how you set your ranges, how tight they are, um, they they just get more pronounced. So okay. um, uh, I'll stop there, you know, before I keep rambling on. But uh, if anyone has questions, you know, um, on what I've just said, you know, feel free to ask. 
Okay. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't know if um, how many of you guys have been in these community calls for a while, but my microphone is doing the thing that it does. Uh, where my Discord doesn't let me speak for <laughs> extended periods of time unless I leave and rejoin. So uh, thank you for the introduction. Luckily, I could hear everything, but I do have some questions. So for the layperson, they may not know how concentrated liquidity works or why it is the case that you get outsized returns by having a concentrated liquidity position rather than a full spectrum liquidity position. Uh, could you explain why concentrated liquidity is more profitable or pays better yields than full spectrum liquidity? Yes, so uh, it's all about compromise. So what what you're giving up is range, right? So say with traditional pools, you are providing your liquidity between a range of a price of zero to infinity. Uh, with concentrated liquidity, you set a price range. Let's just take an Ethereum USDC pool, for example, and say with the current price at like uh, 1250, you want to provide liquidity between a price of 1100 and 1350 right um so in exchange for providing liquidity in there what you're doing is you're able to efficiently use your capital you can you're if you're in a sense leveraging your capital but not in a leverage sense where you have the danger of liquidation right the danger here quote unquote is uh, if it falls out of that price range, you just will not receive any more uh, fees because your liquidity stops providing liquidity beyond those price ranges, right? So in a, in what you get in benefit is uh, you're, you're leveraging your capital within that, within that price range, which acts as a bigger part of the liquidity within those price ranges, which allows you to capture more fees. As a, in a sense, you're a, you're a larger part of the pool than you would normally be in a traditional pool sense because you're leveraging that money. So in order to, so in a sense, you're getting more fees in, in payout, you're getting a higher percentage yield in right. payout um, based on the liquidity you're providing, right? So that's how it's being leveraged. It's because the trade-off is there of where, okay, you can only provide liquidity between these ranges, these price ranges, say 1100 to 1350, and you'll get a higher payout because your liquidity is, is concentrated in those, in those ranges. So that's, that's, that's the kind of like the... All right, uh, cool, thank you. Thank you for that. So um, let's get a few of the termino a few bits of terminology down for for the people who may not know. Uh, from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, the price ranges or like the the bottom price range and the top price range are also known as ticks. Uh, so you so in in one in your example, right? You have a, a bottom tick maybe at like 1100 for uh, Ethereum, then a, a uh, upper bound tick or higher tick for maybe I don't know fourteen hundred or fifteen hundred. Now, uh, is that correct? Is that a correct understanding of those? Is that term of those terms? Yeah, just to expand on that, uh, the ticks that uh, say like Uniswap uses is they 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 you provide your liquidity when you provide it in those ranges is provided in ticks. So it's like it's like a uh, price range uh, in each tick. And it, it's all dependent on the uh, fee tier. So in Uniswap, you, you'll see, uh, say like the, I'll just go back to Ethereum USDC, you'll see a 0.05% uh, fee tier, you'll see a 0.3% fee tier, and then uh, like in some altcoins, you'll see 1%. So, so depending on those fee tiers, the ticks change uh, are, are different between the pools. So your liquidity isn't your your liquidity isn't like effectively providing liquidity from say your range of eleven hundred to thirteen fifty dollar for dollar cent per cent. You know it's based on those ticks, and those ticks um, are kind of like think of it like fragmented in price. So uh, if if price goes from one tick to another tick. There is a jump in price. Uh, there, there is a, a like a like a void, and where there's no liquidity being provided for in that price, and that's 
And that's where traders uh, that do swaps on, on Uniswap, they'll see, uh, they'll see slippage in their trades. Um, and that's, that's because it depends, you know, if they're in the 0.05% tier pool or the 0.3% uh, trading there. And that all depends, that all ties into volatility at the time, right? But just kind of put it simply, it, it, all, it all ties in together in that aspect. So uh, yeah, the tick, the tick is, uh, is, uh, is structured in a way that, um, you know, you're not providing liquidity across the entire price range. It's, it's based on ticks and those ticks each have a specific uh, price range within each tick, if that makes sense. Sort of. So when you say a price range within each tick, so let, let's say uh, my I'm, I'm on Uniswap V3 right now. And by the way, if you want to get on Uniswap and like share your screen to to explain this um, better, that that could be really helpful uh, for us yeah. to for us visual learners, much like myself. Um, so I'm looking at Uniswap V3 right now, and I see like the minimum price I have at at six hundred twenty two dollars as an example. Uh, is that the lower bound tick? And if so, does that have a range within that tick? Is that the and does the fee tier affect that? Now I know Cryptor uh, has, uh, has sent us a, a research paper for those of you who want to like really get deep in, and uh, dig into the math. But um, from your perspective, Phil Walker, what would you say? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that last part of the question again? Yes, um, I'll share my screen too, so to make it a little okay. bit easier uh, yeah. here. So, so, like right now, I have this this range on this 0.3 percent fee tier. Uh, bottom tick being 622, top tick being you know, 2400, pr pretty high up there tick. Uh, and so these two ticks, is there, when I select that tick, does that tick also have a range? Or when you say a tick yes, has a range, uh, what does that mean? So like say on the on the minimum price tier, mm -hmm. just click the, po the, the plus or minus and if you, if you just click it, you see how it changes in price? Yes. So each one of those ticks, uh, it... Oh, I see. So each click is a tick. Each click is a tick, and it, and it has a price range within it, you know? Uh, and I, I don't know the exact math. I, I, I didn't dig in that deep. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, you can see how it's kind of like fragmented. But yeah, each, each time you hit that button, you know, you're going to a different tick. So you're going tick by tick. Got it. Down until you get to a range you want. Now here, uh, now these percents, like negative forty five percent and twenty seven percent, that's just the the increase from the current price to get to that tick, and the decrease to the, from the current price to get to that tick. Is that correct? Like the negative forty five percent back here means a forty five percent drawdown. Okay, awesome, fantastic. Yes. Uh, now. I like this. Great. Uh, I, I do want to mention that there are a lot of different concentrated liquidity protocols. Uh, and so I'm going to shout out a few of them. And then please let me know if there are other ones that we should be thinking about. So Uniswap is is the one that's most well known. Uniswap v3. It's on a number of chains. Uh, we have you know Optimism, Arbitrum. Uh, I didn't know it was on CeeLo. That's pretty interesting. That's either new or just unused. Uh, and then Polygon being probably one of the most popular places for it, given that it's accessible and uh, cheap transactions. Optimism and, and Arbitrum being more new. Uh, KyberSwap is one that we've been sort of talking about in the Discord quite a bit lately. Uh, it looks a little bit more difficult, but if you go over to Earn and then my and then Pools, and then like you know click on let's see, uh, wrapped staked ETH and ETH on the plus button, you will see that you have this very, very similar setup we saw before with sort of like the, the tick buttons down here and then the fee tier right here. So very, very similar to Uniswap uh, once you get down you know, to the nitty gritty. Orca is one that we're probably familiar. Orca Whirlpool, Whirlpools, I swear I can speak English. Orca Whirlpools uh, is one that you're probably familiar with if you uh, utilize Solana. Um, Camino is the protocol that we use to optimize these, but uh, there's a bunch of these here as well. Very similar structure. Uh, I can connect my wallet, um, but I'll do that, I'll do that later. Uh, basically, no matter where you are, you're going to be dealing with these Uniswap V3 uh, type interfaces. Now, do you know of any other protocols we should be looking at? Uh, so... So yes, I'm I'm familiar with all those. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing that we, uh, when you provide liquidity in these pools, uh, is you have you you have to take into account volume, right? Overall volume, uh, 
And I think that that's probably if you had to put it put it down to one thing, it would have to be volume. And Uniswap, you know, uh, brings in about fifty percent of the volume right throughout this whole space of DeFi. Um, so that's where you're going to get consistent. As long as you have volume, that means there's transactions being implemented, swaps being made, and you need those swaps to create that volume in order to generate those fees to pay you that yield. Um, so the Ethereum pool or the Ethereum chain on Uniswap is probably the most consistent and uh, consistently paying uh, yield paying pool out or yield paying uh, uh, platform out there as far as a concentrated liquidity. Um, but there are, there are some new, uh, platforms coming out. And one that I found was, uh, was Trader Joe. They recently right. launched the, the liquidity book, which is very interesting. Um, so they're, they're using, it's, it's similar to Uniswap, but what they're doing is, um, they have like some sort of volatility accelerator that allows uh the platform to charge higher fees to to traders that are swapping and what it does is they take a portion of those fees those higher fees and they pay the liquidity providers a larger uh a larger yield during that time when volatility is heightened once volatility calms down uh the pools will go back to uh, say like a regular payout of the yield until volatility picks up and the reason for that is they want to try to overcome impermanent loss because impermanent loss is is definitely it can be a killer and um, you know even though I'm not a big uh, uh, I don't take impermanent loss as seriously as most people do but it is real it is out there and say like if you're especially if you're farming and you're an active farmer on on Uniswap V3 or any concentrated liquidity pools and you're hedging. Um, or even if you're not hedging and you're constantly having to manage your pools, uh, every time you manage that pool, uh, if you rebalance and go back, you know, uh, rebalance and, and uh, basically when, when you rebalance your pools, uh, say like if you're in an ETH USDC pool, you start out with uh, 30 ETH and like, you know, you, you're split evenly between ETH and USDC and then you get uh, your pool gets leaned too far to one side where you have primarily all ETH and you have mm -hmm. to rebalance. Well, what you're doing is that you're foregoing the, the potential opportunity of getting some sort of mean reversion, right? Say if price, you know, price likes to move up and down. We just don't know where it would, uh, where, the, where the pivot points are, right? Um, so you miss out on opportunities to where price can mean revert and and you make back that in that in those losses right you make those losses permanent so even though i i don't i'm not a big uh i i don't i don't really uh use impermanent loss as a huge factor but it is there and you have to you have to work around it and develop a strategy around that to 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 use impermanent loss and and kind of use it in your favor by by um you know if you're if you're yield farming and you're wanting to be delta neutral at all times this might not be a good strategy for you right but if you're willing to forego uh some of that neutral neutrality at times by getting by allowing your pools to get a little uh net short or or uh net long and you don't mind that while you know, implementing some sort of hedge to kind of cut out some of that delta exposure, then uh, this could be a great strategy for you. Um, you do get you do you do get higher yield payouts for that, um, uh, and and you could use your capital a little bit more efficiently, where you could use use a little a smaller portion of your capital than you would in a traditional pool. But um, but with the with the trader, just going back to Trader Joe. Um, I just I think it's a pretty cool innovation, and um, it, they just launched like last week, and uh, I've I've already started messing around with it, and um, it's pretty neat. I'm seeing over 200% uh, APR on a AVAX USDC pool, 
um, with a range of of a price range of thirteen fifty to about fourteen ten, uh, and and it's been uh, it's been pretty pretty good. I'm not hedging it or anything. I'm just trying it out. So, um, but uh, but uh, but yeah, it's, it seems promising, you know. But we'll we'll see when the when the volume comes in and the and more TVL starts building on that, and we'll see how it, how it plays out. But um, but uh, but yeah. until then, I mm-hmm. mean. Looks good so far. So I've been looking at the TVL here. It looks like we're at uh, about 2.2 million um, on this particular like AVAX USDC uh, pool. There's probably an AVAX USDC E pool um, doing a little bit better because for whatever reason, USDC E tends to have higher yields. Uh, with So there are a few pieces of vocabulary that I'm not familiar with. May, maybe you are. Um, I know this is like brand spanking new. So if you don't know, like don't, don't, don't feel embarrassed. Uh, the bin price. Do you know what this means? What the bin price is? Yeah. So uh, from what I understand, the bin price... It's kind of similar to the ticks in in Uniswap, but in in here, uh, when when uh, trades when when price is is at a certain bin, that's all it is. It's just, it's just wherever price is, and no matter the idea is like no matter the size of the trade, uh, they will fill that trader's order within that bin, and uh, uh, okay. this. I see. So. So yeah, so but if but if but if it gets to a point where they move the market, um, this is where that volatility accelerator comes in. But but the idea is to keep is to have zero slippage in 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 all trades, and this this could this could attract uh you know bigger mm-hmm. uh you know just larger larger traders um you know to be able to make their transactions on on you know on decentralized exchanges. Because right. right now they they can't they can't without all the slippage that's out there, you know you're you're seeing on Uniswap, or or even if you use a Dex aggregator, you know even when things are very calm, there's no volatility, everything's smooth. You you still see a like a point one percent slippage, and you know say if you're making like a trade of worth a couple million, you know that's that's a big chunk of uh that's a big chunk going to slippage. So if you can guarantee no slippage, then then there's that's definitely a, a draw for them. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's I think this the is, idea. This is one of the things that you and I were talking about in the uh, in the channel earlier. Was that like why would people be willing to pay more um, when there's more volatility? And I think you know my conclusion was that if the slippage is low, larger traders will always be willing to pay a larger fee for lower slippage. Uh, and and you know Trader Joe's sort of having what I call hegemony or uh, you know um, the run of the avalanche chain in terms of liquidity. Uh, I think they're going to be able to do that, but we'll see, right? It's, it's yet to be determined, and I don't like to speculate too much. So I just want to get a little bit more clarification on this because, you know, I am a slow learner. Uh, I will admit that, but when I learn something, <laughs> I try to learn it well. So here we have all these different ticks, right? Cryptherb says that uh, bins are the same as ticks. You're saying that bins are the same as ticks. So here in the middle bin, we have both USDC and AVAX, but then on either the left side or the right side, we either have just USDC or just AVAX. Can you explain to me yeah. why that is and how to understand that? Yeah, uh, just at that current price, that's yeah. the amount of mm-hmm. quantity left in in uh, AVAX and uh, and USDC. Once okay. once it completely exhausts all all that It'll all that uh, inventory, mm-hmm. it goes to the next. Bin. Yeah, got it. Okay, depending depending where you know, depending who's who's next in uh, who's wanting to sell. If they want to sell AVAX, you know, of course it will go to the left. But if they want to, if they want to buy AVAX, they'll go to the right. So let's say that right now you're like you have super concentrated liquidity only in this one bin. That means right now your liquidity pool would be like roughly ninety five percent AVAX and like five percent USDC. Is that is that pretty accurate? Yeah, that's actually uh, the idea behind it. You can actually because um, I was I was kind of messing with the ranges and just you don't, one you tick. Don't get, uh, uh, for me, okay. I, I, I put it between a price of 1350 to 1410 just mm-hmm. to play with it. But, um, the idea with this is that, yes, you can be in like one to two bins in your range, but you have to actively manage it. Right. Right. But I'm, I'm assuming the fees will be pretty astronomical, mm-hmm. which, um, I just haven't had the time to really sit there and, and, and do it and take the time to do it. But I, I really want to, but that's, that is the idea because, um, you, you're essentially staying at that price and if you can monitor the inventory before and kind of anticipate where price is going to go you can you can adjust your your uh, pool 
to kind of go to the next bin and go to the next bin and 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 prevent that impermanent loss you know because price is still it's right at the same uh you know is at the same near the same bin but you know avax price moves pretty wild so so when you I, say i don't know how when you say prevent permanent loss, like th this interests me. What, what do you mean by that? Because uh, I'm, I, again, I'm only used to conventional liquidity pools where the, if it goes in one direction, in permanent loss. If it goes in the other direction, in permanent loss. Uh, when you're when the price is in the bin you predicted, if it goes up and down within that bin, why are you not experiencing uh, like super volatile and permanent loss? Uh, well, that's I haven't tried it myself, so I'm not. Okay. I'm not. All right. Too sure, but um, mm -hmm. but that that is from what I read in their in their in their documentation. But uh, this is the idea I'm generating from it that you can sit there, and uh, you don't have to be necessarily in a range of one bin. You could be in a few bins sure. of range, right? Mm -hmm. And and then then you'll start experiencing an permanent loss. But um, but I think the idea here is um, you can really keep your ranges tight and kind of um, anticipate. A move and if you want to get out of the bin completely before the move you could get out and wait until price calms down right if, if it gets volatile and uh, so I've just seen multiple ways of playing this and and it just gives a little bit more uh, flexibility or just kind of gives a kind of a heads up to the our a visualization I guess to a liquidity provider to be able to plan out their the, uh, the way they provide their liquidity now, I've also seen you uh, sort of discuss in, in the channel the, the two different types of strategies, like either uh, very active management or a slightly more lackadaisical, larger range, uh, less management style. Which of these two styles do you feel is, or like what's the benefit of both these styles in your, in your personal experience having done them? And then which one do you think like is, is preferable for the average sort of uh, lay new Uniswap V3 user or concentrated liquidity okay. provider? Yes. So uh, for, for the more active, um, and when I say active, I mean like someone that can sit at their desk and watch and watch their pools, right. And, and adjust as needed. Um, you can you can go to like a, a three percent uh, say i'm talking about range the entire price range of of your pool you can go from like three percent or even five percent wide which is very tight and uh and and earn fees within those ranges and be able to manage it which means managing means just rebalancing your pools uh setting new ranges right so but that's that's for very active management, and I wouldn't suggest it under the Ethereum blockchain because of the fees, the transaction fees. Right. You're better off doing it in Arbitrum or Polygon, uh, even Optimism, uh, to to do that. And what what you're doing by having such a tight range of around three percent is that you will earn a lot more fees, and you could do it with a lot less capital, right? So you kind of you you're able to use less capital but earn a high amount of fees and manage it that way. And then on the other end of the spectrum, if you want to be a more passive, uh, a little bit more passive and not have to manage it very often. Uh, right now, say for instance, I'll give you an example of what I'm doing. Uh, right now I'm about 20% uh, wide and that's taking into account the current volatility that I'm seeing within and recent price action. So price price hasn't been really moving very uh, too much uh, recently. So you can I consider the twenty percent wide range very tight uh, because when volatility does pick up, I can be as wide as 50, 60 percent wide in my range, and I'm talking about price range throughout the throughout the pool. So this there's there's trade-offs with this and when volatility picks up which is what we want as liquidity providers we want volatility we want choppy we want high volume but we don't want price to move and get away from us in one in one direction right so in order to when volatility picks up when you spread out your your range to like say a 50 percent wide on an eth usdc pool uh you're allowing you're allowing uh, your pool to still generate 
a similar amount of a return on yield because the higher volatility will generate more yield. But what you're also doing is minimizing and kind of uh, minimizing that impermanent loss as well uh, in case you need to rebalance, right? And the idea is like you hopefully don't have to rebalance and you could be in that pool long enough to not have to rebalance while, while you're in there. So when you say a 20% range, do you mean 20% above the current price and 20% below? Or do you mean like... That was kind of long-winded explanation <laughs> <It's> totally fine <laughs> uh is it but um, uh yeah if, uh, i it's it's again. you know even for me like when i first started uh uh even even though i've been trading the stock market and options for a, for years it was still there was still a learning curve in learning it and understanding it and um you know i the common mistake i see with what people do is when they first uh, get into this is they just see the high yields and they want to put their range as tight as possible and 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 just get that triple digit APR return right. But um, as as you as you'll learn and as as you as you get more experience, you start realizing like okay, maybe there there has to be a balance right, and it all depends on what your time horizon is right um uh you know what your strategy is what your market sentiment is even you know and that and that all plays a factor into how you structure your pools you know you know whether if you want to start leaning more long do you even need a hedge do you need to hedge are you bearish right you can you can borrow you can borrow enough crypto to create a a, a, a bearish pool you can you can just buy the the crypto you can um you know, you could do it in a way where you use centralized exchanges. So it, it really varies and it depends on what what the person is, uh, what the individual person is looking to achieve with the pools. So so in a way, it's it's uh, it's not it's not like, you know, the holy grail. It's not, you know, I know the high APRs sound great, but you also have to think like there are there are trade offs and with those trade offs come, you know, can can be pretty uh damaging if you don't know what you're doing okay so, sorry for continuously coming out in and out it's because uh my mic's you know like i said cutting out uh i don't know why discord hates me i, I don't know i feel like it, this doesn't happen to anyone else but thank you for that that explanation um so I want to sort of like get like an inside view of your specific strategy is maybe one of the last few things we do. But before I do that, I want to ask you about some of these auto managing protocols uh, like Arrakis and like Camino. These being the two that come to mind, though, I do know that there are others out there. And if there are others out there that you guys know about and like, please do drop them in the chat uh, so we can be made aware of them. But Arrakis and Camino are the two that, you know, pop up in my head when I'm thinking about these protocols that auto manage your concentrated liquidity for you. What do you have you played with them? Have you messed with them? What do you think about them? Uh, I, I looked through their I just looked at their like Arrakis, I, I, I kind of that's the one I, I really looked into. Um, and uh, what was another one? I think that was the one that I really like dove into. And um, the, the the issue that I that I have is um, with these is that I mean, they're, they're great. They're great. But uh, there you have to think about you have to think about the little details. You have to think about slippage, which is a big one. Uh, say when they when they rebalance, right? Um, I know I know like you could set. I'm not sure with Arrakis, but I've seen like with uh, I believe it was like Unibot or one of the others. But I'm just gonna kind of generalize here. I'm not really going after one specific platform, but uh, if there's some that you could set a stop loss, right? And it'll it'll get you out of the pool at that price. It would it would convert all your crypto back to USDC um, and then you sit and then it waits there until you're ready to to reinitiate a, a new position. But the problem with that is that when it converts, you have slippage, you have swap fees, you have transaction fees, and then you got to swap back to rebalance. So you're kind of doubling up on on transactions and slippage and it really cuts into into your returns. Not only that, but you know they they usually take like a ten or fifteen percent you know performance fee out of that 
to manage your 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 pools. So for me, I, I just I just it, and and you don't know when they're in performing those swaps. Like say they perform those swaps when volatility is very high, and you could see as high as like one percent. You know, if volatility is really high. You know, in slippage, and 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 your gains would just be you know all the yield you generated. If it's not enough, it's all gone, right? So. So these are the things you got to think about when, when, when doing these, and um, it would be, it would be, it would be better if they could imp implement some sort of, uh, some sort of parameters that say, okay, uh, these decks, uh, uh, we need to monitor dex aggregators and and see when slippage is more favorable. Uh, should 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 it perform these stop losses? when when uh slippage is high or when volatility is high or should it should it wait right or should it wait after it hits the stop loss maybe it should wait until volatility calms down and and uh you know conditions are more favorable to make your rebalancing should it should it not um another thing like should it not just go completely and stable up right like sell all your crypto and go back to stables right and wait for you to be ready to put in the next one then you have to rebuy those th that crypto right why not why not implement and use a hedge like can you put a parameter that says you know what i have a hedge this is my delta this is the delta i want to maintain right like this is the max delta i want to maintain only sell this amount of crypto right like so so <clears throat> i know i know this is asking a lot but I think these are the things that would really like propel me to use one of these platforms. But until then, I just do it manually. Duly noted. Uh, now, have you ever used a platform like Revert Finance to to open or manage your concentrated liquidity position? I I I I've been currently using it for the optimism uh, mm -hmm. rewards, the incentives they're giving out, but um. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't use uh, Revert. I, I I do everything through Uniswap, and then uh, I use Dex aggregators to do my swaps, um, uh, and that's pretty much it. I I don't. I don't really use uh, third. You know, like a third party platform to manage my my pools. I I do it directly. And but uh, but yeah. I mean, well, if you want to expand on that question, you know, I mean, I've used Revert. I've I've. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. So, are there? Hopefully, you guys can still hear me. Are there any tools uh, like Revert that you think are are essential for uh, people who are trying to get into Uniswap v3 or concentrated liquidity pool management or provide provision? Oh yes. Okay. So, um, my top tool that I use is the DeFi Labs. Uh, I could. Yeah, please link it. Link it. We'd love to have a link to it. Yeah, I, I can link it for you guys here. Let me just pull it up. Throw in the chat here. There we go. So I I use this. This is my main tool. This is where I what I use to forecast and and uh it's great because it has a position breakdown and you can easily see uh depending on your on the range you set you can see how much how much delta exposure you would have at different prices like if you're hedged right and uh, you can kind of forecast okay when price gets up here um this is this is uh this is uh this is a this is still within my range of price i'm okay with this delta net exposure net short or net long and uh and you can really fine tune your your pools based on this tool so it like if you're really wanting to get into this uh this is probably my top pool to really like to plan out and understand how your pool is going to act depending how the market moves okay so, now i have a big ask uh, I don't know yeah. if you're able to share a screen, but if you could share a screen and then walk us through DeFi Lab, like each, or okay. or you can use, I'm sharing my screen now, um, but you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you can either like walk me through what's going on here, or you could share a screen and walk us through. Yeah. Uh, which would you prefer? Uh, here, I'll just share my screen. Awesome. So let me stop sharing.
Can you guys uh, see it? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So, say you come here, right? Um, you always want to make sure you're in the right pool, first of all. Um, and uh, oh, it cut off. Okay, yeah, it's still running, right? You guys can see. Yes, it? yeah, absolutely. We, uh, okay. So it'll it'll say like it'll say something right, weird yeah. on yours, but but we can see it. It does, yeah. Okay, all right. So yeah, uh, make sure first of all you're in the right pool. Um, and I do want to touch before before we end this. I, I do want to touch on on the difference and uh, of these fee tiers and when to use them because I think it's it's pretty important and a lot of people I don't think understand or or think about this right. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, you want to make sure you're you're on the right pool. So uh, we'll just use Ethereum for example. Uh, I want to get into the 0.05% tier. And the reason why I always sort by volume uh, is because volume is what creates the transactions and the transactions is what generates the yield, right? Because you need you need traders to to swap in order to cr generate those those yields, those fees in order to pay you out. So so we'll go to 0 0.05%. Um, and then uh, just let it load here is a little slow. But uh, say like a pool here, I'm just going to use one that I have as an example. Uh, this is like a range that I've, that I've currently been using. And uh, so what I really like here um, is especially this here, the position breakdown, you know, by token. And what this does is it tells you what your quantity amount is based on price right as you see i i move i move the uh cursor here and you can see as price changes the quantity changes now now uh if you if you do technical analysis you're like okay um here let's just go to eth and if you're like okay just a general you don't have to draw crazy lines or or do anything crazy you just simple support and resistance right you're like okay price you know, rejected at near 1700, right? Um, you know, price has been holding around 1100, right? Um, let's see what what kind of range can I can I put here in order to benefit from uh, some sideways uh, chop in the meantime, right? Until until we break out, right? So so you see 1100, 1700, okay. So maybe uh, maybe we we don't have to go we don't have to go all the way to 1700 because it would reduce see as i'll show you here the the gener this this tool here the strategy back test kind of tells you you know what you should expect uh based on the previous 30 days of returns right this is this is an actual return of this pool in 30 days right this is the apr you're expecting and the amount of time it sat in there was about 89 percent uh you're getting almost 165 percent apr uh, within that range, which is really good, right? Um, but if you want to, you're thinking, okay, well, what if I want to kind of cover that range in case price does break out, moves up towards the higher end of the range, right? What can I expect? So you could you could kind of see here, okay, 80%. And if you're okay with that, you could kind of start structuring, you know, your, your strategy. Um, it seems like you want to lean long with this, right? Because the way, the reason why I say leaning long is because with the with the wider price range at seventeen hundred, the amount of ETH that gets sold off is a lot less than it is uh, if price was like you can see here, like say from twelve sixty to fifteen hundred, you're you still got about seventeen ETH worth that you're long in the market, right? But if you move this down to my previous one of like say 1345, you know, you're not even gonna make 1500 by the time you run out of ETH. So if, you're, if you have a hedge, right? And say you're uh, in the, currently your, your amount of ETH is at 23 ETH, uh, you borrowed 30 ETH. So you're net short about seven, about seven ETH, right? You're seven ETH net short. So you're like, okay, well, if I think price is going to move to 1700, right? And I I want to I want to still stay long as possible or at least kind of keep keep my hedge effective enough to kind of neutralize some of the delta in case we do 
uh, get movement back down and up and I don't have to worry about it. So at any point of time, like say in this range, you're kind of around sort of delta neutral, right? I mean, you're, you're going to be like give or take 10, you know, 10 ETH, uh, maybe 15 ETH net short uh, due, to the, uh, due to the hedge mm -hmm. and as, as your ETH gets sold off. But um, you, can, you can look at this tool and, sh and forecast exactly, depending on price, where, how, how, how are you going to be positioned during those prices? And if you're like, well, I'm a little uncomfortable being 15, you know, say down here, uh, I have a 30 ETH hedge short, right? And I'm only 16 ETH net uh, long in my pool, right? I'm right. a little, I'm a little, uh, I'm not as uh, comfortable being uh, that net short up here. So you can adjust your strategy. You can have a, a larger hedge. You can, are you uh, interested in you protocols that have add, You can have a, a larger thousand. amount of ETH uh, to start out with um, and kind of just balance it in that way to kind of maintain and understand exactly how your pool will perform based on these ranges. Now, now, say if price starts running away, uh, I'm going to go back to my, we'll, we'll just stay at this, uh, at this range, but say price starts running and I'm not rebalancing, uh, I'm awaiting for the eventual, uh, looking for that mean reversion trade to not lock in that impermanent loss. Because if I, if I start rebalancing out here and get back to delta neutral, if price moves back, down back to like 1200 from like 1600 you're you're getting losses back in this direction so it's kind of like a double whammy here and and uh it's it happens sometimes you know sometimes you you know managing that risk is more important but uh what i found in doing is you don't have to completely manage out the risk what you can do is limit the amount of delta exposure you have so say like you get you get up here to almost 1600 and you only have 10 ETH long in your pool and you're 30 ETH short in your hedge. Okay. This is, I want, you're, you're now 20 ETH short. So I don't want to go further than 20 ETH short. So if price keeps moving further out, right, I will rebalance the pool and keep that 20 ETH net short and keep generating fees in the meantime. Right. And yes, I will be in a loss. Yes, it would suck. But the idea is I am waiting for that eventual snapback to whatever price range. It doesn't even have to get all the way back here. You know, eventually it snaps back. Say we consolidate over here in the 1400s. And then I, from there, I can make a decision. Okay, I need to rebalance here. I need to neutralize and set up new ranges or, or, or widen out my, my ranges to alleviate that risk just in case price decides to move back in this direction. So what you're doing is you're recapturing those losses. So you're using that impermanent loss in your favor and uh, you wait for markets to calm down. You get some sort of mean reversion, even if it's not complete mean reversion. But in the meantime, you're generating a lot of fees. And this is, it's imperative and you have to be in the pool when volatility is high. Otherwise, there's no point in doing this strategy. You can't, you can't sit in a pool in times like these, like in the past couple few days where price of ETH has been, you know, like in a 20 point range, like you're not generating any fees. Like it's, it's, it's kind of, it kind of sucks. You're just waiting, but you're waiting for that volatility to pick up and that's where you start generating the fees. And then, you know, you, you will be, you will be lopsided to one side or the, or the other, depending on how you set up your pool, but you have to be okay with that. And you've got to use this, this tool in order to forecast that and come up with a plan. What if this happens? What do I do? This is how, how short I want to be. This is how long I want to be over here. Um, you know, let me adjust, you know, set up my hedge this way. Uh, I'll know exactly at what price you know, what my positioning will be if it gets there and what I will do in case, you know, we get runaway price, you know, so that's the idea behind it. All right. Awesome. Uh, I say this is the top, oh. the top, uh, you know, feature of DeFi labs right here. It, it really helps a lot. Let me. Okay. Sorry. I had to rejoin again go. because I, I was speaking, but, but no one could hear me, uh, as is usual. Um, 
Yeah, thank you for for walking us through DeFi Labs. Uh, this this tool seems incredible, and so like immediately in my mind, a, a few things are 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 popping up. Like one, uh, could we use medium to high leverage perpetuals to to short with the expectation of liquidation if it goes out of range, uh, but being okay with the liquidation because then you know you're you're you are so in fees that it's okay, or rather. Uh, you you make a ton of money outsized if it goes sort of uh, downwards, and that's that's one thing that's popping into mind is like how viable could that be, and can I create a calculator to to test that? And then the next one is can we use some sort of uh, either either a straddle or a strangle or whatever they they they're called, where uh, you know maybe on Deribit where outside of the ranges we actually start making money. Um, so I don't know. I think there are a lot of interesting ways to hedge this. And now that I have a better grasp of how it works, thanks to you, uh, I, I will certainly start looking into this. And I, I'm, I'm pretty excited, actually, for, for the future of our concentrated liquidity understanding. And I hope that I can maybe... Actually, your, your tool, uh, your calculator, the, the, the UniV3 calculator, is really helpful. It actually uh, adds to this. And I would suggest using that as well because you can see, okay, you can further, you can further break down um, okay, uh, what, how your positioning will be, but you can also use your calculator to see, okay, how many days do I need to be in this pool in order to overcome this? If say price runs away, how many days do I need to be in that pool, uh, in order to, uh, in order to stick with it. Right. And, and, and generate enough yield to make it either like get me break even or start getting a profit. And then, uh, and then, well, hell, if if the if there's enough yield being generated, well, I'm fine sitting in I'm fine sitting uh, net short, you know, in this pool, and and I'm generating enough yield because the volatility is high. Right. Well, yep. Eventually, if price mean reverts, even if it doesn't get it all the way back, if it gets halfway through, you know, wherever, then you're you're gaining all that impermanent loss back, and you're and 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 then that's where it really shines, and you and you have that yield really paying out. And you're like, wow, this is actually really good. So, too much active management, I think, is too is is not sustainable. First of all, you spend a lot of time doing it, um, but second of all, you're locking in in permanent losses along the way, and it's, yep. it's just very difficult. But yeah. um, but you're if you implement some sort of permanent. trader, yeah, exactly. But if you have like uh uh if you implement you know simple you know price. You know, price structure, uh, mapping out key support and resistance, liquidity levels. You know, you can you can you can set up a, a strategy around this that that can be viable. Well, I, you know, I'm really happy to hear that that my tool was actually useful. Uh, Barry Barry Fried and I are, are actually probably going to work on it some more and get like volatile volatile pairs, not just volatile stable pairs, uh, active. And I would like to implement some sort of hedging calculations as well because I think that there is a way to to hedge these that is probably price efficient if you can accurately estimate the APY. So uh, yeah, I will I'll share the calculator. Oh, okay, I'll try to share the calculator. I'll see if I can find it. There I have so many that I'm in the middle of messing with right now. Uh, so I like. I may accidentally share one that's in the middle of being made, um, but let me see. I mean, if I yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, I would definitely appreciate you uh, taking the time for that because that the Uni V three calculator is definitely uh, uh, it definitely helps. Awesome. Yeah, I think yeah, this is this is the one that I think works. So, uh, sharing it right now. You have. Oh, yeah, that's right. It, you do have two. Uh, Cryptherb has also made some. So maybe the one you're thinking about is Cryptherbs, because uh, I want to say Cryptherbs is nicer than mine. But uh, so check out Cryptherbs, and you can share that if you if you'd like Cryptherb. Um, but I've shared shared mine. Mine is very simple, and it only does uh, stable unstable at the moment, um, and doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that it should, like uh, being able to to anticipate volume and volatility and take those as metrics. Uh, it's just very, 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 very simple based off of like the rudimentary math on how concentrated liquidity works uh, that, that, you know, thanks to, to Barry Fried and Olegai for, for helping me understand those two things. Um, but yeah, check out the tool. And uh, thank you so much for joining. I think that now um, we should go back, play with some of this understanding. Uh, maybe I'll play with some hedging and um, hopefully we can do another call in a few weeks and see like... Uh, 
have we can we evolve our strategies can we get better more efficient and become the masters of, of liquidity across all the chains uh but yeah th thanks again so much for joining us and that's all i have to go pick up my son from from elementary school but um i genuinely appreciate this and and don't forget to drop a link either i guess at this point drop it in the concentrated liquidity channel to let people know okay. about your discord will do thanks steven <laughs> All right. Everyone have a wonderful day and thank you guys so much for attending. See ya. Have a good one.